All right, look, I wasn't actually gonna record this or anything like that. I was just gonna watch the video, but I'm like, you know what? I haven't posted a reaction video in over two months. No! And then I seen my team, the Lakers, on the thumbnail. So I'm like, why not? Let's do it, you know? Make sure you guys like and subscribe. We gonna get straight to it, man. Got our weed, got our peace, let go. Over the last two NBA seasons, I have made a prediction on who I think will win the NBA title. And I use strictly who? numbers and potentially predictive metrics to narrow down my decisions. Overall, I think my predictions <laughs> went all right. In 2022, <laughs> I chose the Celtics to what win it all, hell? and they came within two games of doing just that. Last season, I chose the Celtics again. They were too young. If it weren't for the Heat being the greatest eight seed ever assembled, that might have panned out as well. So this season, I considered predicting the eventual NBA champs once again. By the way, I think it's okay. going to be the Nuggets. But as fun as these experiments are, the reality Come on, is man. Numbers the nuggets uh, i'm gonna just stop right i'll just stop right now conclusion, no i'll talk about it after you factor in the what else we gotta say too unpredictable and just a week into the nba playoffs we all got a jarring reminder of just how unpredictable it can be Facts. game two of the lakers nuggets series in particular really crushed my hopes of ever being able to pin down any sort of coherent prediction after being down oh 20 God. points in the third quarter, the Nuggets crawled back and completed one of the largest comebacks in playoff history. Jokic is nearly perfect as usual to close out the game. Jamal Murray summoned his inner prime. Bro, that's why I think that we could beat the Nuggets because in every single game, in all four games, bro, we literally led in the first half. Just the first three games, we didn't keep it up after the half. Coming into the third, we just like, I don't know. I guess we got too comfortable something and uh, i think we should have got that in the second game but we didn't and then it, it took us whole three games just to actually get that right but yeah the nuggets definitely haven't dominated the lakers at all this whole series you know so i think i think some crazy shit might happen i'm not gonna lie michael to you michael jordan for the millionth time to put a dagger in the hearts of lakers fans <sighs> we were all stunned but why did this comeback feel bro i was so sad incredible? The I was mad. In the water at one point in this game. I don't know what the fuck. I never was. felt like they were completely out of it. All types of and emotions. No universe should a Miami Heat team without Jimmy Butler and Terry Rozier beat a 64-win Celtics team by double digits. And yet, was this game really all that surprising? Has the NBA and specifically the playoffs become more unpredictable? Than hey man, Miami Heat is known for having hustle players. players. Teams who skated past the first round, teams that seem to be levitating above others on their way to the conference finals. Ooh, but in today's Kobe NBA, Shaq. all bets are off. Any uh, team Kobe. can win at any moment. Regular season performance becoming more and more irrelevant to postseason success. But why is this? Here's a relatively normal win probability chart. The line starts in the middle, where both most people Dude, have no clue. That really? The both teams have a 50-50 chance of winning. The closer the line gets to the top or the bottom, Let's go teams back. have a 50 normal win probability chart. The line starts in the middle, where both teams have a 50-50 chance of winning. The okay. closer the line gets to the top or the bottom, the better one of the team's chances of winning becomes. In okay. this game, the Bucks took an early lead and held on to it until the end of the game. This is normal. Game two of the Sixers Knicks series was not. Okay, they're leading. They're leading. Oh, wait, no, no, no. What the? F what the? No, wait, wait, wait. What the? F <laughs> Yo, there's no what the hell? There's no way that was that many lead changes and that much of an increase. That is crazy. Nah, this one at the end right here is the crazy, is and then going up that is crazy. And there is a big reason why. That is crazy. Today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. The okay. is a twenty leads any order. Is any lead safe in the NBA today? Ten points is not nearly no, enough of a cushion. A Shit, twenty point man. Win especially with my Lakers. By any no. metric, and yet, as long as there's time left on the clock, a twenty point lead can be chipped away relatively quickly in the NBA today. The Nuggets overcoming a twenty point deficit in Game Two against the Lakers was remarkable. But you know what's even crazier? With a minute and 15 seconds left in this game, the Nuggets had 92 points. They ended the game with 101. 
That's nine points in 76 seconds to close out a playoff game. According to Unpredictables.com win probability model, the Nuggets had just an 18% chance of winning this game with Bro, a minute and 27 what? seconds left in the fourth. Even crazier, a more unlikely comeback happened on the same exact night. Take a look at the clock. There's just 30 seconds left in this game. The Knicks have 96 points. When okay. the clock hit zero, they had 104. They had eight <coughs> points in just 20 Damn, seconds and they had in B2? To clinch a playoff win. You cannot predict this. There's no metric that will see this coming. There's no game plan or scheme to prevent this. The Knicks had just a 1.7% chance of winning this game with 47 seconds left on the clock. A couple three-pointers and free throws later, and those chances were all but irrelevant. And even when games <laughs> don't come down to the wire like That's this, crazy, they are man. still completely unpredictable. In game two of the Celtics Heat series, Boston was favored by 15 points going into this game. They lost by 10 points. One of the best regular season teams in NBA history lost to a team missing two of their starters at home by double digits. The NBA is as volatile and that is fucking crazy. Unpredictable as it's ever been. Unpredictable.com's win probability model not only gives a play by play breakdown of how likely a team is to win. That's like the Lakers winning without LeBron and AD. Or lose, it then uses this data to identify the most statistically unlikely comebacks throughout NBA history. Given a point deficit, time remaining, and ball possession, their comeback metric shows how likely a team was to win or lose based on how other teams have fared in that exact scenario over the past 10 years. A comeback score of 50 would be considered highly unlikely. This Knicks win over the 76ers in game two had a comeback score of 56.8. Now, here's a chart of every game that featured one of these highly unlikely comebacks from year to year, dating back to the 1997 season. For many years, these comebacks were limited to 10, maybe 20 a season. But year after year, the number of crazy comebacks continues to climb, with the most in a single season coming this year with 32. As pace continues to increase in the NBA and teams incorporate more three-pointers into their game plan, the outcome of these games has gotten more and more unpredictable. The NBA has always been a make or miss league, but as offenses have become more potent, so has the potential for comebacks, upsets, and unforeseen results. In any given NBA game, there are four statistics, known as the four factors, that have the highest correlation to winning basketball games. How well a team shoots the ball, turnovers, offensive rebounds. Yeah, damn, Jimmy. Bro. <coughs> <coughs> Bro, I'm not gonna lie. I think this shit only applies for the West, if I'm being honest with you, bro. Like, unpredictable shit, upsets. I mean, I guess in the East it could happen because Miami's doing it right now. We see and how it? often a team is getting to the but line. But it's more how likely in the West. Four factors will usually determine so one through A is just insane. Game. But in today's NBA, most games boil down to just one factor. Here's a chart of how often teams won a playoff game over the years when they made more three-pointers than the opposing team. Over the wow. last three postseasons, when a team makes more threes than their opponents, they end up winning the game over 70% of the time. Peaking in this year's playoffs, where teams that make more threes than the opposing team have won the game 81% of the time. More than rebounding, it makes sense. To the line, it's simply making or missing. A three is more than two. <laughs> have become the overwhelming factor that is deciding these games. When compared to the traditional four factors, making more threes than the opposing team is actually a better indicator of which team will win the game than any really? other metric right now. And you might be thinking, well, of course the team that hits more threes wins the game the majority of the time. Yep. But this wasn't always the case. In fact, in the past, hitting more threes had almost no correlation to whether a team was going to win or not. From 1990 to 1994, when a team made more threes than their opponent, they won about 45% of the time. What so the? Not only were threes not prioritized, teams that relied more on three pointers actually performed worse than other teams. What? From 2010 to 2014, the win rate for teams that hit more threes than their opponent in the playoffs jumped to about 55%. So just a decade ago, making more threes gave teams a slight edge over their opponent, but it was still just one of many variables that would 
determine the outcome <laughs> of a game. This is literally around the time Steph Curry came into the league. Run. A game breaker. Even if the shot was a good open look, teams didn't take a lot and they didn't make a lot. But over the last decade, the shot has not only become the focal point for many offenses, it has become the deciding factor in the majority of these playoff games. How many games have you watched where your team gets out to a 10, 15, even 20 point lead and despite a massive cushion, they still can't relax knowing that all it would take is a few long bombs to shift the momentum. Shit, I just went through that. Around. These Three games in a row. Used to be improbable. Get yourself a double digit lead and holding on to it late in a game was relatively manageable. But now, a 15 point lead in the NBA is nothing. Teams can close that gap That's in crazy, the blink bro. of an eye. In 2012, That's just crazy. over a decade ago, the Miami Heat won a playoff game without making a single three pointer. In those same playoffs, <laughs> the Grizzlies had a game where did they, they attempt any? Oh, they did. And beat the Lob City Clippers. Damn, they only attempted like digits. six right there. Here's a series in 2012 where the Jazz hit nine threes throughout the entire series. Go back even further, yeah. and you'll see shooting volatility and the reliance on three That's pointers crazy. dip even further. Right now, you usually see that from like a player, and then if a player shoots like nine threes in a season, they're considered not above average, basically, you know. They're considered decent. For the Celtics and Hornets combined Just for crazy. 13 made three pointers throughout an entire playoff series. The Miami Heat just hit 13 threes in one half of a single game. Three pointers are a high variance shot inherently, high risk, high reward. When a team is only shooting 10 of them a game, this variance plays a marginal role on the outcome. The results of the game is a bit more expected, but when teams are shooting 35, 40 threes a game and hitting half of them, the game isn't just affected by these shots, the entire game hinges on the outcome of these shots. A team can miss a handful of shots and find themselves on the bad end of a 15 point run and then flip the script, hit a handful of threes themselves and seemingly out of nowhere, they have the lead. In their first three games against the Nuggets, the Lakers have held a double digit lead at some point in the game. And yet when watching these games, the score might as well be tied with how explosive the Nuggets offense is. And this volatility has seen a spike in the postseason in comparison to Bruh, the, the Lakers lead up. Usually be up by like 30 score less than they do in the regular to season. actually win the, the game, game slows down teams have an entire series to prep for the opposing team's schemes and sets scoring gets more difficult but over the last few seasons this discrepancy from regular season performance to playoff performance has only grown larger between an increase in games missed from key players injuries going into the playoffs and the previous mentioned variance in shooting and scoring a team doing well in the regular season has become more and more non-predictive of how they will do in the playoffs Playoffs. Over the last 20 seasons, on average, teams are scoring about three to four less points in playoff games than they do in regular season games. So far Damn, in the really? 2024 playoffs, the league is averaging 10.5 less points scored per game than they did in the regular season. I mean, it's that the playoffs, an unprecedented right? Gap. Better this defense. In playoff scoring shows just how disconnected the regular <coughs> season has gotten from the playoffs. This has always been the case, but it is far more prevalent now than ever before. Here's a moment in game two of the Bucks Pacers series. With less than 11 minutes left in the fourth quarter, the Pacers Bang. had a four oh, point shit, lead on missed. the Bucks. That's a one possession game. Five minutes and 23 seconds later, the Pacers were up by 23 points. Here's game oh, one of the Suns T Wolf series where the Suns were down Damn. 15 <laughs> points with about 10 minutes left in the fourth. Within two minutes of game time, they were down by 25. I'm not gonna lie, I think I tuned in for like two minutes. With 332 left in the third. That is crazy, bro. The first time in months that I do a reaction video or anything like that, I get all these ads. I don't usually get these. What is going on? Third quarter, the Heat were down 17. Bruh. A lot, but still very manageable. Is this ain't joking? Three minutes later, the, the Heat were losing by 32 points. These kinds of scoring outbursts are happening all the time now, and they end up being the deciding factor of these games more and more often. Andrew Lopez of ESPN wrote a great article on this in March of this year, detailing the change in scoring variance the league has seen over the last few years and how some players and coaches are reacting to these scoring explosions. 
Victor Wembanyama said during his time in the NBA so far, he's learned a 20-point lead is nothing. Minnesota head coach Chris Finch was also quoted saying, you see a lot of unpredictable results regardless of the point differential and the margins of the score. Like, wow, how that team beat that team. And then you look at the column and they made 22 threes. There was a time where you weren't taking 20 threes in a game. It's all down to that. But the most eye-opening part about this article was this stat. When Steve Kerr began his tenure with Golden State, the Warriors strung together 114 consecutive wins when holding a lead of at least 15 points. Now, the longest active streak when taking a 15-point lead is just 35. No lead is Damn. safe, and any team can win at any time. I heard a really good analogy about how God scoring damn. volatility has altered the NBA, and it's probably the simplest way to understand exactly what's going on in these games. Literally divided that by more than three. Yeah, the racing game for children. Well, in that game, hey, you man. Get out to a massive lead, I haven't played in a while, but that shit's fun as fuck. Racers so they can catch up to you and make the race more competitive. And if you fall behind, the AI racers will slow down so you can catch up. This is a mechanism built into the game called rubber banding. The mechanism exists so if you're really good at the game, it still remains challenging. And if you're not so good at the game, you still have a chance to win. No matter the gap between you and the other racers, the game will close it and make the races competitive. Scoring variance, three-point volatility, and shot making has triggered this rubber banding in the NBA. When a team jumps ahead by too much, the other team comes racing back. Got a team that is the deepest, most talented team in the league? Yeah, well, we have three-pointers, and we know how to use them. Just went on a hot streak, hit a bunch of shots, got out to a lead. That's all right. You'll eventually get cold, and we'll hit an improbable amount of three-pointers in a row to close the gap. <laughs> a team can meet yeah, all the yeah. prerequisites to be a title contender. I, I saw that game. All the boxes that pass Bro, they were making off. everything. Everything was going right for them. In any given series. And still, the NBA is as unpredictable as ever, where no lead is safe and no team is safe. Bro, that was a great video. I'm not even going to lie, bro. Shout out to Jimmy. I wonder if the league is ever going to change in terms of three-pointers and like a 15-point lead and not being safe anymore and shit like that. Or it's just going to advance to some other shit like a four-point line or something like that. You never know. They might put a four-point line. You guys think that? Let me know in the comments, bro. But it was a dope video and shit, man. Shout out to Jimmy.